Hey guys, what's happening? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and the kids have a two hour delay from school today, so I decided I was going to try to get this uh, beginner's guide how to video for the Sony Cybershot HX99. This is a really somewhat affordable ultra compact mega zoom camera. It's the HX series from Sony, so the sensor is a bit smaller, so the image quality is not, not as good as the RX100 series, but it's still pretty good considering the size, and what that small sensor gets you is an absolute insane zoom range. So this thing's got a equivalent 24 to 720 millimeter zoom. So that actually works out to 4.25 to 118, um, but you have to do the crop factor. Anyways, that's why the number doesn't say 24 to 720 there. It says 4.25 to 118 because that's what the actual lens is. And here's the aperture range. It's f3.5 to f6.4. And it's a Zeiss lens. So Zeiss made this lens for Sony and it's a Vario sonar and it has the T-Star lens coatings which is awesome because that's really going to help with glare and it's going to give nice punchy contrast and also rich colors. So that's a nice feature. It's also got 4K with full pixel readout. That's a very nice feature and it should make for much better 4K video. Going over this camera now I just wanted to, this is a beginner's guide, so I just wanted to show you the body really quick. So on the bottom here you have the tripod mount and you have an HDMI port. Now I have no idea why Sony decided to put the HDMI port there. That kind of sucks because you can't have it on a tripod and use the HDMI output. So basically I have a HDMI cable right here that I use and the, you know you basically almost have to hold the camera when you use it. You know what I'm saying? It plugs in like that. Like this is the cable I got anyway, and obviously you cannot use the tripod when you have it plugged in like that. So you either put the camera like flat on its back, you know, something like this, or you're holding it basically. So that's how that works. And when you plug into here, it goes into the TV, and the TV will then just show you what the camera, what, what's on the screen on the back. That's basically what it does. It just, instead of using the screen on the back, you're, you're going to see it on the TV or the monitor and uh, that's pretty much how that works. Really not much to it, but the monitor does turn off when you're using this uh, HDMI output port by default. One other thing I wanted to show you is how to charge this. Actually, let me show you where the battery goes first. You just slide this little thing over on the bottom. There's a little tab there. You slide that over, that pops open, and here's where the battery goes. The arrow points to the left, and that's where the battery goes in that hole there. And the memory card, so you just push that in, and this little blue tab swings over and like locks the battery in place. Now right here is where the memory card goes. It takes a micro SD card. So the one I'm using is this guy right here. It's a SanDisk Extreme 64 gig and it's an XC. So it's an SDXC which allows for better quality and higher bitrate formats and it's a V30 in case you're wondering. So this card is good for 4K video and I recommend getting a good large card because 4K video, especially at 100 megabits per second, will fill up that memory card quite quickly. So looking at the bottom here, notice how there's this little tab on the screen. That, that's what makes it easier to flip the screen up. So if you're having a hard time, you know, you want to grab it from the side, like on the RX100 series, you can grab them from the side. On this one, they kind of want, they have it set up so you grab it from the bottom and it'll flip 180 for you so you can go into selfie mode. All right, it's kind of hard to see here. Let me just zoom that out a little bit. So now I'm in selfie mode. So if I press this, you'll be able to see how I have this set up. You can see me there with the camera. So looking at the top of the camera, you have the on and off switch. You just push, press the button, there's really not much to that. To the left here, you have the mode dial. I will go over these in more detail shortly. To pop up the flash, you have this little slide lever here that pops the flash up. And then on the side here, you have the viewfinder pop up. So if you press this button, it'll pop up the viewfinder. Now you do need to pull this out, this little viewfinder. You just grab it like this and you slide it out. So now you can see it slid out. It's a little bit cheesy feeling. It doesn't really feel like the highest quality, to be honest with you. And on the top, it has the little diopler thing to adjust for your vision. You might need to adjust that. But then you can't close the viewfinder. You have to push it back in. Then you can close it and the camera will automatically turn on if you pop it up and pull this out. See the camera automatically turned on for you? And then it automatically turns off. See that? 
So I just wanted to go over a couple more buttons on here. So on the top, you have the shutter button here. When you press that, it'll take a photo. When you press it halfway down, it'll focus for you, but it won't take the photo. It'll just lock the focus and you'll hear it beep. But when you fully depress it, it'll trigger the shutter. Now this is a little zoom toggle. It's got a little lever here. This zooms in and out. And when you're viewing your photos in playback mode, like when you're checking them after you took the photos or the videos, this will let you zoom in and out on the photos. So that's what that does. The lens also has a spinny ring here that'll do different things depending on what mode you're in by default. However, you can configure it so you can, if you're in one of the more advanced modes, you can configure this to do different things. But by, I'm just gonna leave the camera at default for this demonstration. On the back, you have a bunch more buttons here. You have a menu button here that'll get you into the menu. You have a flash button here that'll give you different flash options. You also have an auto button down here on the bottom. So this, this dial here turns and it is also buttons. So it's, you know, it's got four buttons and then a button in the center and it turns. And then on the bottom here, you have a custom button. That's why there's a C there. You can program that to what you want, but it's also the trash can button when you're in playback mode, you can delete your photo by clicking that button and it'll say, are you sure you want to delete? And you just click it and click the center button. Yes, I want to delete it. And this play button will bring you into the playback area so you can view your photos or your videos that you took. Now, again, on this side here, you have self timer mode and the uh, multi shot mode. It's different shooting functions. I'll show you that in more detail when I turn the camera on. And this is a function button and then send to smartphone. I'm gonna have to do a separate video on the send to smartphone stuff because that's gonna require setting stuff up, an app on the uh, phone or tablet, for example. So I'm not gonna cover that now. And then you have the record button here, the movie record button. Now this placement of this button kind of sucks. I've already accidentally hit record like four or five times. So let me just show you one thing quick how to charge this thing. So you have a, a multi USB port here and basically you plug that charging cable that you got with the camera in there. So you plug that in like so and I will just turn this so you can see I have it plugged into a strip power strip here and once it's charging you will see, let me just turn this back, you'll see a yellow light there. See that little orange yellow light? That means it's charging. That's how you know it's charging. So make sure you have your thing fully charged, your, your battery fully charged before you head out. And I would recommend getting a couple extra batteries because you're only going to get like 300 shots or so out of this guy. So, I mean, it'll last a while as long as you don't have it on all day and you're playing with the menus and showing everybody the photos on the back of the screen and stuff. So let me just unplug that and turn this guy on. All right, so now that we have it on, I am in full auto mode, and I recommend just leaving it there until you get used to using the camera. In full auto mode, um, when you hit this button here, you have the display button. Let me just close the screen. See this display button? That'll change the way the display looks. So there's all different display modes, which is awesome because it'll show you all the current configurations that the camera is set for. And if you just cycle through them, you can see the different display modes. And when in full auto mode, up here on the top left, that'll tell you what the camera thinks you're shooting. So right now it thinks it's in macro mode. That's why it's showing a flower there. And again, there's all different options. The histogram, that's what that is. And you could see that little wheel popping up right here where it says step zoom. It goes away, but when you hit the display button, see right there, it says step zoom. When you turn the zoom ring, it's gonna step to different zoom ranges. See that? So it's telling you now that's 70 millimeter and it's just stopping at like the key spots. There's a hundred millimeter. Works really good. 150 millimeter, 200 millimeter and so forth. All right. So the minimum focus distance on this camera is really good. I think it's like two or three inches. So you can get really close to stuff. I'll show you right here, like this quarter. I can get really close to that quarter and it'll still focus. See that? So that's the minimum focus distance. But when you zoom in, I can't focus on that. See how it just blurs out? So you might be wondering like, why can't I focus on that? It's because the minimum focus distance, you're, not, you're, too, you're way too close to the subject. Even the lab scene is too close at this range. Let's see if I can get it. All right, so right about there. If I zoom in any more than that, it's not gonna focus, see? That's because the minimum focus distance, you could only focus on stuff so close. So I'll be able to focus on the lights in the background but not something that close. 
So I have a, a lot of times people will have a problem with focusing on stuff and they don't understand why. It's because the minimum focus distance. Oh my goodness, I just hit record again. That's driving me crazy. All right, well, watch out for that record button. Probably gonna hit it like 10 more times. All right, and the camera will automatically focus on stuff that's closest to the camera. So if I just try to focus right now, it's gonna pick that quarter. And if I move that away, it's gonna focus on the lab scene. Or it might focus on this because this is closest. It really depends. But usually it'll focus on what's closest to the camera just by default, just so you know. Now, if you wanna change some settings in auto mode, if you hit this function button here, let me dial my exposure back up a little bit. If you hit this function button, see the FN button? That'll bring it into here. And because we're in full auto mode, a lot of this stuff is grayed out, but you do have some options. So you have quality here. I would recommend leaving it in JPEG mode, but you can change that to raw quality or raw plus JPEG if you want. Raw quality will give you a little bit more leverage when it comes to post-processing in a program like Lightroom or something like that. But uh, you know, for a camera like this, I really wouldn't mess around. I, I, just my personal preference, I, just JPEG with a camera like this seems to be a better way to go. Uh, just my opinion, but absolutely you can get more out of the file if you're shooting raw quality. But they're going to be much larger file sizes and the colors and stuff are going to be more flat and you're going to need to process them to make them look nice and punchy. Now one thing I wanted to show you uh, in the function menu again is this auto mode. If you go over to this auto mode, there's another auto mode. You have intelligent auto, which is the default, but if you go down, you have superior auto. Now superior auto what it'll do is it'll actually allow the camera to take multiple shots. So it has a couple of different functions. It'll have multi-shot noise reduction and it also has multi-shot blur reduction. So if you're trying to hand hold in low light, it'll actually take multiple shots. And you could see it popping up on the screen on the top left here. See on the top left by my thumb, there's a little icon there that's showing you like stacked images. And depending, well I don't see it right now. It was popping up a second ago. There it is. So it's gonna take multiple shots, listen. Oh man, it didn't do it. I need to shut the light off. Let me, if I shoot over there, it's a little darker. Hear that? It took multiple shots. So the camera will automatically do that to try to limit blur and also it'll stack the images to make the noise less. And that's the, really the difference between superior auto and intelligent auto. Intelligent auto will not take multiple shots like that and in general I would leave it on intelligent auto but if you're like at night in low light conditions or something like that you might want to try superior auto and you can change that while in full auto mode. The other options you have here are your focus mode. So right now it's set to single shot focus which means when you focus it's just gonna I'm just pressing the shutter halfway down. It's just gonna focus and then lock. It's not gonna track your subject or anything like that it's just going to focus and lock, and then when you take the picture, it'll just take the one single shot. And if it, the lighting is low, it'll tell you to pop the flash up. Let's see if it does that. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a little bit too bright in here, but if the lighting was a little lower, a little menu would come up on the screen, and it'll tell you to pop up the flash. Now, another thing about this camera is it has touch to focus, and that is on by default. So you could see, I just touched the screen, I'll do it down here so you could see a little better, and a little, a little square popped up. And now that the camera's gonna focus there, you see it lighting up green? So you could always override whatever the camera is focusing on by just touching the screen where you want it to focus. And it works really good, it's a great feature. So now if you wanna cancel that, there's a little hand up there with an X on the top of the screen. It's kinda hard to see, but up there there's a little hand, or you can just hit this center button the center of the wheel and that'll cancel the touch to focus function and now it'll go back to focusing you know using the intelligent focus system that's built into the camera. Now let me go back into the function menu and show you the drive mode. If you go into drive mode this is where you can set the camera to take multiple shots so it'll just continuously shoot. So now I'm in continuous shooting mode, watch. See it's just taking continuous shots now as opposed to just taking one shot and that's really helpful for moving subjects like kids and stuff. And then if you scroll down one more, you have speed priority. Now this will take multiple shots really quick. It'll do 10 in a row. Yeah, it'll actually do more than 10 in a row. 
So that's really impressive. And if you really are trying to capture your subject and it's moving or you're trying to get like a batter that's swinging a bat or something like that, that's a good mo mode to use. I'm pretty sure it does not track your subject accurately with this camera in that mode, but it will have a little bit of a chance of tracking in regular continuous mode. So if you scroll down, you have self timer mode and it looks like a little clock. And what that means is right now it's set to self timer two, but you can change that to 10 seconds or five seconds. And this is great if you wanna you know, set the self timer for some reason. You wanna take a portrait and you wanna get in the shot with your family, for example. You can set it to like 10 seconds like that. And then you set the camera how you want it and you, you take the picture like you're gonna take the picture and now you got 10 seconds. And a light on the front will be flashing to let you know. See that? And there you go, that was 10 seconds and it kind of gives you a beep warning to let you know you're getting close to the timer running out. And that's a really great function for certain scenarios. Also, if you want, if you're on a tripod and you want the camera to be perfectly steady, I recommend setting the self timer to at least two seconds. And then when you press the shutter button, you're not gonna get any shake. The camera will have two full seconds to like, you know, stabilize itself. And then you'll get a much sharper image. Now below that, you have a couple more settings. This is self timer continuous. So if you wanna take three images, this is again, great for portraits, like family portraits and stuff. You set the self timer continuous and it'll take three images. So you can like set the timer like so, run around, get in front of the camera with your family or whatever, and then as it's counting down, say cheese, and it'll actually take three shots. Cause you know somebody always shuts their eyes, watch. See that? So somebody's always gonna shut their eyes or whatever the case may be. So the self timer three shots will give you a much better chance of getting the shot, you know, without somebody's eyes being closed or something. Now this other option here is the focus mode. Now you can't really do much with this other than put it in manual focus or direct manual focus. And that can be helpful with macro photography sometimes. And direct manual focus will allow you to actually focus but then you can fine tune it. If you press the button halfway down and lock the focus, you can now fine tune it by turning the uh, lens ring. So I'm actually adjusting the focus now even after it locked. And then you can just press the shutter down and it'll take the shot. I'm still in self timer mode though, so sorry about that. But that's what DMF is. DMF allows you to focus and then fine tune it manually but you're still using autofocus. It's a really great feature. I use it quite often actually with other cameras, but for this camera, I usually would just leave it in AFS. But if you're having a hard time and the camera's not focusing on what you want, you know, like say I wanted to focus on that quarter right there and it's not focusing on the quarter. Well, just do touch to focus. Touch there right in front of the quarter and that will ensure that it's gonna lock on the quarter as long as you're not too close to the subject. Cause remember the minimum focus distance. All right, when you're in auto mode, let me just show you with one more thing. See on the bottom here, there's like this little camera with the stars. If you hit, if you hit the bottom here, it brings up this menu. This is awesome. You can actually adjust your exposure compensation by scrolling the dial. And this is in full auto mode. So this is a really great feature. This is more advanced type stuff, but in full auto mode, it gives you the ability to do this. So you can make the images warmer or cooler while you're in full auto mode. Great feature, vividness, so you could jack up the vividness and make it you know, much more punchy and saturated colors. And uh, the last thing you have is picture effect. And you can actually change your different picture effects. You got toy camera, pop, posterization, black and white, retro, soft key, and then you got partial color. You can see on the lab scene how partial color works. It's a pretty cool feature. See the blues are showing up, now the greens, now the reds. And then you got yellow, you got high contrast, black and white. This is awesome for black and white, by the way. Try that out. And then you can just turn that back off. So that was another feature, and you just hit the menu button to exit. So that pretty much covers most of the auto modes. So let me go into the menu system quick and show you a couple other things. So in the menu system, you have up on the top here all these different main categories. So right now you're in quality, image size, and if you scroll to the right, it's just going to keep going through. You have Now this is your shoot mode area, drive modes, bracket settings, memory. There's so many options in here. I'm not really going to go through all these options in this video because it's more beginner based. But pre-AF, just so you know, this will tell the camera to just focus 
it'll just focus all the time. So in other words, if, if I'm holding the camera like this and then I just move it over here, the focus will automatically adjust. It won't just stay locked on where you had it last. And if I move it back here, it'll automatically move to the quarter most likely because that's closest to the camera. That's what pre-AF is. The camera will just assume that you want it to do that and it'll pre-focus for you before you hit the focus button. And that's a nice feature, but if you want to save a little bit of battery life, you can turn that off. Or if you find you don't want the camera to do that, you can turn that off. And if I just scroll to the right, again, a lot of these features are grayed out because I'm in auto mode. That's why I'm showing you this in particular. So these modes will be lit up depending on what mode you're in, or these functions, let's say. You'll be able to change them if you're in different modes. I'm just scrolling over to the right. Flash modes, see all the stuff's grayed out. Now here you got focus magnifier and stuff like that. Face registration, you can program faces. So the camera will recognize like your kid's face, for example, and then it'll prioritize your kid if there's like a bunch of kids in the scene. It's a really great feature. And then register faces priority. You got smile shutter here, so you can have the camera automatically take the picture when somebody smiles if you turn that feature on. It's a great feature, especially if the kid doesn't want to smile. And you got self-portrait timer. If you put the camera like this and you turn it around and you aim it at yourself, it's going to automatically assume that you're taking a self-portrait watch. See the little timer counting down? It automatically assumes you're taking a portrait when you have it in selfie mode like this. So that's what that feature is. So right here, the self-portrait timer one. You can turn that off though if you don't want it to do that. And then in here you have different movie modes. So I wanted to show you this. File format, this is the best quality right here, XAVCS 4K. So that's where I have it set right now. And if you do not want to take 4K, I would recommend using the XAVCS HD. And you'll get much more recording time on your memory card and things like that. And you'll also get more stabilization options. When you're in 4K mode, you're limited with the video stabilization to standard mode. When you're in this mode, the HD mode, which is 1080, you can you actually have active stabilization so you'll get much better stabilization uh, with the camera video footage when in that mode so just so you're aware now down here is your record setting right now i have it set to 24p at 100 megabits per second but you can see you can also do 30p at 60 or 24p at 60 so this is just less data per second so if you have it in 60, you'll be able to get more time on your memory card, but the quality will be slightly less uh, at the end of the day. It won't look quite as good. So I recommend having it there. Now you have proxy recording. This is an advanced feature. It'll actually make a separate file for video if you're doing some serious editing. This can speed up your workflow significantly if you have proxy recording on, but again, that's more of an advanced feature. Auto slow shutter. Another more advanced feature, I'm not going to go over that, audio recording. That's just, you could turn that off if you have separate audio recording devices and you don't want to record audio. I recommend leaving that on though, because you could use it to sync up your footage, even if you are using an external recorder. And then you have microphone level, you can change that. Wind noise reduction, I have that turned on. Steady shot, this is that feature I was telling you about. Notice all the different modes, but I could only use standard because I'm in 4K. If I was in 1080 mode, I would be able to select active or intelligent active. And again, that'll give you much better stabilization if you're hand holding in particular. Marker display, this will show you basically on the screen where your video is going to cut off because it crops when you're recording video and you can change those settings around. You can actually record mo the movie with the shutter button. That's a nice feature, especially if you're in movie recording mode. There's a dial here, one of them's movie record, and it's, it's, I, I keep hitting this button by mistake, so this is a feature I probably am going to end up turning on. It'll help you. Uh, release without a card, this, that just means you can take a photo without a memory card in there. And then steady shot is the stabilization system. You can turn that off if you don't want it on. Range of zoom assist manual. I'm not sure what that means. I'm sorry. I'll have to look that up. Now zoom setting. If you go into zoom setting, you can change it to optical zoom only or clear image zoom. Clear image zoom works really well. I recommend turning that on. And that'll actually give you an additional effective 700 zoom, 720 millimeter zoom. So it'll double your zoom range. So if I zoom in, for example, to 720, right there you can see on the screen right here it says there's a little magnifying glass 
and that represents the clear image zoom, and that'll go all the way to two. So now that's an effective 440 millimeter zoom, but it is a digital zoom, don't, don't get me wrong, it's not actual optical zoom, but the quality of the clear image zoom is excellent, and it, it really, it looks really good. So I recommend leaving that on and getting that extra zoom. But again, it's really hard to hold the camera steady at those focal ranges. You really need to have it on a tripod. If you're above like four or 500 millimeter, it's just hard to keep the camera steady when you're zoomed in that far. And uh, just, you know, pro tip. All right, zoom speed. Zoom speed, I have set to normal, but you could make it go faster if you want. So if you're recording video, for example, you can switch that to fast and the zoom will go a lot faster. And uh, that's a nice feature to have if you want it. I prefer it on normal speed. And then you have zoom function uh, on the ring. So right now I have it set to step. You can change that though to quick or standard. So I like the step because it locks at particular focal ranges. And I'm just gonna scroll over a little more here. You got display bu button, finder, monitor. You got zebra settings, that's good for video. It'll show you what, like, what the highlights look like and if they're gonna blow out. You can have grid lines on the screen. That just basically puts grid lines on there. It helps you sometimes, you know, use the rule of thirds and line things up to make sure you have your horizons level and stuff like that. Exposure set guide is on. Auto review is off. Auto review is when you take a photo, it'll automatically pop the image up for a second so you can take a look at it. Depending on what you're doing, you might want to turn that on. I prefer to have that off though. That's what that means. And now custom keys. This is where you would program your custom keys. You can set up custom keys for video and for photos, and you can also set up custom keys for when you're in playback mode. And then you have a function menu. You can actually set up your function menu, which is amazing. This is where you turn your touch operation off, touch to focus, movie button right there. That's where I can turn the movie button off. So I can just have that so it's in movie mode only. That's a really good feature. I'm probably gonna enable that because I keep hitting that button by mistake. So again, movie mode is on this dial. You can actually just turn the dial and put it in movie mode, that icon right there. And that will help with that problem that I have when I keep hitting that button. So that's a good feature. Audio signals, you can turn that stuff off if you want. Now here is the network area. This is where you set up to send photos to the uh, smartphone and things like that. View on TV, control with smartphone, airplane mode, turn all that stuff off, Wi-Fi settings, this is where you would set up Wi-Fi settings, things like that. Then you got Bluetooth settings, and you can edit the device name, so you can change the name of the phone if you're searching for it on the network, for example. And then playback mode, here's a bunch of settings in there. And this is different playback functions, how you zoom in, how long it zooms for, stuff like that. You can make a slideshow here, pretty cool stuff. View mode, this will show how it views when you're in playback mode. A lot of features on this camera. And I, I highly recommend you check out the help guide. I'll give a link below the video for the help guide so you can check this stuff out in more detail. Now monitor brightness, I wanted to show you this because if you click that, you could see you can adjust the monitor brightness up and down by turning the dial. Just turn the dial and then you could move it over to make the monitor brighter or dimmer. But if you click, you can change it to sunny weather mode. This is a great feature, especially if in really bright light and you can't see the screen, just switch it to sunny weather mode. It will chew your battery up quicker, but it makes the screen much brighter and much easier to see in sunny conditions. Now moving over, you got more options here for setup. Power save, you can change the amount of time it takes before the camera shuts off, things like that. Auto power off temperature, I have that set to high. If you're recording in 4K video, the camera will get hot and it'll shut off. It'll stop recording at a certain time. And if it's set to standard, it'll shut off sooner. If you set it to high, the camera will get hotter and it gives you this warning. So that's what that means. And this is depending on what, what country you're in. You uh, might want your video to be in PAL. I'm in the Northeast, so I'm using NTSC. And here's some more touch operation settings. You can turn it on and off here. And you can change the way the touch operation works depending on how you're using the viewfinder up here. If you're using the pop-up viewfinder, the touch operation you could have set to just this side of the screen, for example, things like that. And then you have HDMI settings, a couple more options, USB settings, USB power supply on. You're gonna want that on because you're charging the battery and stuff. 
And in here you got your language, time and date setup, area setting. And when you first turn the camera on, you just have to set your, your uh, date and time setup. It's very easy to do. There's not much to that. Otherwise, I would show it to you. But you just have to ch set the time, hit OK, and move on forward. This is where you format the card. You can set your file number, and you can set your file name to something custom if you like. And you can change what folder you want to have your video files saved to. So when you plug this thing into a computer, uh, your files will be in a specific spot. That's what that means. Create different folders and stuff. Version, this will tell you the current version of the firmware. You can see right now it's version 1.0. As I'm reviewing this camera, I just got it. So that's currently where it's at in the future. There's probably going to be firmware updates though. And then here you got setting reset. So this will put the camera back to factory default. And here is the My Menu area. This is an awesome feature, and I only have one item in there so far. This will look empty on yours, though, if you don't have anything in there. And if you go to the right one more, this is where you add items. This is a really, really good feature. I recommend using it, and you can add a lot of different items in there. You could see there's 25 pages of items that you can add to your My Menu. So if there's options you use a lot, like file format, for example, things like that, panorama size or whatever, you can go in here and load your My Menu area up with any of these settings that you like. And I highly recommend doing that because it makes it much easier to find them. As you can see, this menu system is insanely deep and it can be hard to find certain settings sometimes. You're like, what page is that on? Oh, I can't remember. So just load it up in your My Menu area and that'll, that'll do it for you. All right, so now I just wanted to go over a couple of modes quick. Now P mode is Program Auto Mode. So it's basically full auto, as you can see on the screen here, it'll tell you, but you'll get more options. For example, if I go into the function menu, you can see now on the bottom, all those options are lit up. So now I can change all different things. Let me just set the self timer back to single, like so. So in here, if you hit the function button again, you have your focus mode, you have your focus area. So now you can change your focus area to these different modes, center, focus area, you can do flexible spots, so you can actually move the focus around. But I just prefer using the touch to focus. And then you have expand flexible spot. That's a more advanced flexible spot mode. So you could see you have much more features. Exposure compensation. If you turn this dial, you can adjust different settings. The camera is going to choose it for you. Just scroll the dial, and it'll make the necessary adjustments. But you do have some control, which is nice. And then again, if you go to the function menu, you can change your ISO settings here. So this is the sensitivity of the sensor. You can set it to multi-frame noise reduction. So it'll take multiple shots in order to reduce noise. It's a very nice feature. And auto will just adjust your range and you can dial this in. You can see here, you can raise that. That's as high as it goes is 3200 in auto mode. But you can make it so it doesn't use that. You could like lock it so it doesn't go any higher than 800, for example while it's in auto mode. So you have that customization option in here. Or you can just go through and select your um, ISO. And this is expandable. It goes up to 6400 there. See that? Just going to put it back to auto. And also in the function menu, you have metering modes. So you can change the way the camera meters. Right now it's set to multi-metering mode, but you can change it to center. So it'll use more of the center of the screen to figure out how bright the screen needs to be. Metering mode is how your camera determines the exposure. So center will just use the center of the screen. Average will average the whole screen. Now spot metering will just use the small little spot area and that's great for bright subjects. And then you also have entire screen average and you have highlight mode. Highlight's really cool if you want to expose for the highlights. So if you have like really white frothy water or like a wedding dress or a light bulb, something really bright, this is an excellent mode to use if you want the camera to expose for that bright subject. Just switch it to highlight metering mode. But I'm just going to leave it on there for now. Average metering. And then you also have the creative style. That's just how the camera processes your JPEG files. So you can, standard is a good way to go, but you can also put it on vivid, portrait, and that'll, portrait's better for skin tones. Landscape, that'll punch up the greens and the blues. Sunset, that'll really give you the exaggerated sunset colors and so forth, black and white, sepia. That's what creative style means, and that's right here, okay? And then you got white balance. 
white balance is basically how the camera decides to analyze the colors. It, it decides what color is what based on white balance. So, you know, a lot of times it's cooler out, cooler lighting, or warmer lighting. So auto white balance works really well, but if you're in sunny daylight conditions, um, you can just set it to the daylight mode if you want. If you don't want your images to change at all throughout the, you know, if, if like the sun and there's clouds and stuff, sometimes your some images will look warm and then some will look cold if the cloud is cut if the sun is covering covered by clouds for example but if you lock it into daylight mode the white balance will stay the same even if the light changes a little bit that's what's cool about locking it into a specific value but in general i usually use auto now if you're inside and you got those incandescent lights you know those yellow lights that we all have sometimes you can set it to that mode and then you have all different color lights here and then you have flash mode and then you can adjust the temperature here. So right now it's 5500K. This is good if you're using specific lighting. Like in the lab here, I actually have uh, the light I'm using is 3200. So you can see now the colors look pretty natural at 3200 because that's what the lights are configured at. And then you have custom white balance. So here you can have it set to a custom value. And where you set that is right here. So this is where you set the custom white balance. So you can set it here and then you can program it to one of these options and pull it up at a later time. So for example, if you're, you know, outside sometimes and then you're going back to inside and you can you can actually set the white balance for outside, set the white balance for inside, and then you can just go in here and pick wherever you are for that custom white balance. It's more of an advanced feature, but I just wanted to go over that really quick. Actually, let me change that back to auto. And you can see here it's actually exposing the lab scene quite cool because the lighting is 3200, so it's a little bit off here but that's the advantage of setting it custom like that. All right, so that's P mode. Now if we go to A mode, that's aperture priority mode, and it'll tell you that on the screen here. It gives you a little information, but basically it allows you to adjust the aperture. So if you turn the dial here, you can see you can now dial in the aperture to what you want, and the camera will adjust the other settings for you. I recommend just leaving it in auto ISO for these modes. Now if I change it to S mode, that's shutter priority. And basically that'll allow you to control the shutter speed. So you can see now I'm controlling the shutter speed and I'm overexposing the image because the aperture is set to 6.3 because it's trying to accommodate what shutter speed I want. Notice how the aperture just adjusted and it'll adjust all the way until it runs out of ISO and that'll start blinking. See now it's blinking because it can't make it any brighter than that ISO. The ISO is maxed out and if you press the button it'll tell you what the ISO is set to. See how it says ISO 3200? The camera won't go any higher than that. That's why this is blinking. It's telling you you can't get a faster shutter speed than that under these conditions. You're just, that's it. That's the best the camera can do. If you want 800, it's not going to do it. The, the scene's going to get darker because the camera can't do that because ISO is maxed out at 3200 and the lens can't get any faster. F3.5 F is as fast as it goes. Again, some of these concepts might be a little more advanced uh, for you if you don't know what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, that's shutter priority mode. And then you have full manual mode. You switch it to the M. Now you're looking at full manual. So this is going to give you the ability to adjust both the shutter speed and if you turn the lens ring, that's going to adjust the aperture. So you can really, this is great for if you really want to lock the camera down to specific settings, taking fireworks photos, blurry water shots, things like that. Manual mode is a good way to go for more advanced shooting. Now I'm just going to skip over the custom program modes. That's like a separate video and I want to show you movie mode. So in movie mode you can record movies and you can see right now it's in standby mode but if you hit the function button you can actually change a bunch of settings here. Notice now how it's in autofocus continuous. You cannot choose autofocus continuous in any other mode on this camera as far as I can tell. So you can see here if you go into the focus modes, AFC is now lit. So you can switch it to manual focus if you want, but you can't change it to AFS, which is what the camera uses when you're taking photos. So now it's in continuous focus mode. Now if you hit the function button again, you can go over here and you can change your exposure mode. Click that. Now you can change it. It's in program auto, but you can change it to aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, or you can go to manual exposure mode. So you have the ability to do that while recording videos. If you don't know how to use those other modes, however, just leave it on P and the camera will do the work for you. 
and a couple other things. You can change the ISO and things like that if you want, the white balance. So you do have some options here, focus mode. Now, and one thing I wanted to show you is you can, when you're recording video, you can use touch to focus. Now you have to hit the record button to record video, not the shutter button. So let me just adjust this screen a little bit so you can see it a little better. So right now I'm recording video and it's recording. But if I touch the screen, I can tell it where I want it to focus while it's recording video. So I want it to focus there. It's going to focus there. And if I hit there, it's then going to focus on the quarter. And if I focus over here, it's going to focus on the lights in the background. So the focus will automatically transition and it does a really good job. I'll show you a sample clip of this right now. So that's movie mode. Now one other mode I wanted to show you is the panorama mode. This is awesome. I took a panoramic shot and I will show you a sample of that in a second. Oops, I just hit the record button again. So panorama, you can see here, if I adjust the exposure down just a touch, it's a little easier to see. You can see an arrow there and it's telling you go that way. So basically what you gotta do is, you gotta hit the shutter button, start taking pictures and then swoop the camera around. Now, it's, it's going to fail because I didn't do a good job. It, you have to move the camera at a certain speed and you have to go all the way, otherwise it's not going to work for you. But I took a couple panos and it, they, it came out pretty good. I'll show you uh, in wide mode. Oh yeah, if you turn the dial, you can change the direction of the panorama. See that? Pretty cool feature. Just so you know. So you can actually change it to this way and then hold the camera this way and take a pano. You know, or you can take a vertical pano, like shooting up and down. It's got it's very versatile. But also, if you go into the menu system and you go to panorama settings, there it is, panorama size. See that? If you click that, I have it set to wide mode. So that's going to be a really skinny wide panorama. If you set it to standard mode, it's still a wide panorama, but not as wide. It's a little bit easier to take the standard size, just so you know. All right, so one other mode I wanted to show you is scene mode, and you can see it there. It's right next to the auto mode. It's SCN. When you're in scene mode, you have all these different scenes to choose from on the left-hand side. So it's full auto mode automatically tries to detect what scene you're in, and it does a really good job. Like if it sees a face, it's going to put it in portrait mode. If you're really close to something, it'll put it in macro, macro mode. If it sees like mountains in a landscape scene, it'll put it in landscape mode. But this allows you to override that and force it into any given scene that you might like. So again, and it explains what it is when you just scroll through the different scenes. So this is still a full auto mode area, but you can actually select the scene you want. And it's a great way to override the camera's full auto feature, but you don't have to know how the camera really works. It's a great beginner mode. Uh, it's great for anybody, really. You know, you're just trying to get a good picture at the end of the day. So if you want to get a good picture and you're not sure what settings to use, but you know you're in a night scene, for example, you can go into scene mode and put it into night scene. Now, this is good for uh, if you're not using a tripod and it's really dark and you want to get a nice sharp shot, this is a great mode right here. It's handheld twilight mode and it'll take multiple shots, combine them together, and it'll actually give you a nice sharp shot at the end of the day. It'll blend in and uh, blend them together and, and take all the, you know, blur out of it. And night portrait, it'll automatically tell you, put the flash on, it'll expose properly for the background. Another great feature. Anti-motion blur, reduces blur with indoor lighting, and it's great for telephoto shooting. And uh, again, these are just great modes. You got pet mode, you got food mode. Here you go, for those foodies out there, put it in food mode, you're bound to get a good shot. And fireworks, another great mode for, you know, fireworks is more an advanced feature. And it's kind of hard to get shots of fireworks. So you generally got to go into full manual mode and you got to know what you're doing. But this will do it for you. And it's a great thing to check out. High, high ISO sensitivity. This is really good for super low light situations when you're not using a flash. And uh, just try that mode out in that situation and you'll see what I mean. Alrighty, so that's scene mode. All right, so one other thing I wanted to show you was the playback mode. If you hit the play button, that'll bring you into the area where you can review your photos. And again, if you hit the display button here, you can view it in different ways. 
So this will give you all the information. So you'll know, you know, every setting imaginable that was pretty much set, what mode you're in when you took the shot, your histogram in RGB, which is quite nice for you advanced users. And it's a nice feature. Now this one is just full screen with no information. This is a good mode to use if you're using the HDMI output and displaying it on a TV to show your family or something. You can zoom in by using the zoom toggle here. And when you hit the zoom once, it'll automatically go to 100% and then you can zoom out and you can see there's Jace on the couch and I was just taking some test shots at higher ISO values and if you hit the uh, play button it'll bring you back to 100% and again you could hit display there to see more information and you can see here I was at ISO 800 for this particular frame that was just the lens closing automatically now if you just continue to scroll through you could see up here on the top it says 1 of 31 and that's how many images and videos I have total. Now here's a video. So if you just want to hit play, I was just taking a quick video here so I could show you guys. And this is just a quick sample video. Um, just so that's how it works. You just hit play, you hit stop. You could then scroll, you know, and scan through like so. And it works pretty good. And it tells you the quality you had it set at and stuff like that. All right, and then again, if you just hit the play button, it'll bring you back so you can go to the next photo. Now here is just a quick shot. I just wanted to show you quickly while I'm in here. This was taken and clearly the shutter speed was too slow, 1 15th of a second. So it was telling me to pop the flash up. So I popped the flash up and took another shot and I told, told Bones Jones to smile. And there he is, he smiled. And you can just see how sharp the image came out. It uh, came out really good. You'll see this on the screen in the uh, full review, but I just wanted to show you that quickly, how that works. And again, play button will bring it back so you can go to the next photo. Now here's another photo, and zooming in, you can just see the sharpness there on his eyes. Came out pretty good for on-camera flash, considering. And again, play button, you can go to the next photo. And here's one of Jace on the couch using the flash. That's with the flash, that's without the flash and just one of the Christmas tree. So that's how the play mode works. And again, here's more video I just took playing around here. Just want to show you that and I'll show you how you take a picture with the flash. Just pop the flash up, put it in auto mode. And it's not dark enough to take a, take a flash, but I have a flash ready to go. So if, it, if the menu pops up on the screen to take a shot with the flash, just pop it up and it'll take the shot with the flash. And the viewfinder. If you put your eye near the viewfinder, it'll automatically switch to the viewfinder mode and then you can see through the viewfinder. See how cool it is? It's like a little TV you're looking at. So again, that is pretty much it. If you liked the video, please do me a favor, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And also be sure to ask questions. I'm sure I missed a few things. Just let me know in the comments below and I will try to accommodate that in the full review if I missed anything. All right guys, I really appreciate you checking out the video. I'll catch up with you next time. Take care.